Okay, so uh, very welcome to the School of Astrophysics Weekly Colloquium today. I, I expect that more people are going to come, but uh, I think uh, we want to maintain the time schedule. So we are very glad to have Dr. John Todosto with us today from uh, Harishchandra Research Institute in Inhabar. And uh, Dr. Dotto did his undergraduate studies in Narendrapur College, uh, Ramakrishna Mission, Narendrapur Ramakrishna Mission College, which was under University of Calcutta at the time. And then he went uh, to Pune University for his MSc, and that was very uh, common at our time, going from Calcutta to Pune. Any of my classmates went to Pune University. And then he went to uh, uh, Europe for his PhD. So his PhD is from University of Evora at Lisbon, Portugal, and uh, there was a joint PhD program with the Institute for Theoretical Antiquities at Heidelberg, Germany. So there was a joint uh, uh, Portugal, Germany PhD program. And then he came back to India after his PhD, was a postdoc for a long time and a national postdoc, Professor Adizer Mohali. And then he moved to uh, HRI as a visiting scientist there. And we are very glad that we have him here. And we are to hear from him about the formation of the very fast stars, a very, very attractive topic, first source of light, as he has put it to in the universe and their survival possibilities. So without further delay, let's talk about Dr. Dotto. So thanks, Shushitanadi, and for arranging uh, this seminar. Uh, OK, so. Hello, like, this, this one. Well, we have to just do it there. Okay, so as it is, the very first star, star or uh, the very first source of light in the universe. Okay, so. Uh, throughout the talk, we will try to understand. Uh, so, what is uh, the very fast stars? For example, if we just look at the sky in a very, very, just this is a very small angle. Uh, we can see lots of you know uh, astrophysical object. Uh, we say ast astrophysical object because see it has different color. For example, red. The blue means that it's more uh, you know. Uh, more temperature uh, uh, and the, the different size. Okay, so this is uh, just even in the with bared eyes, we can see uh, uh, lots of you know, uh, but at the this yeah, one. Yeah. <clears throat> so we can see different sizes, different colors, uh, and of course, uh, we can. Uh, we can have a lots of data nowadays, even from lots of ground based and the space based telescope. But here, we, if we just zoom in, so that one, bottom. yeah, bottom, that's one, this one. We just go to the next slide. No, it, no, it doesn't, doesn't do the slide change. So just, okay. The slide manual. okay, okay, okay. So, for example, we can also have different type of galaxy like this galaxy, Andromeda galaxies. Okay, everything has different structure. If we even zoom in this part, just to uh, this is the, just a one part of the disk, we can see many gaseous structure. It's a very nonlinear structure. For example, if we even zoom in, you are all familiar with this picture. Different type of radiation, metallicity. Uh, wind, stellar wind, many things are there. Our question is, for example, here, this is an image, there are lots of star formation region is there. This is a HST uh, images. The question is that, okay, so there are lots of astrophysical objects, but at some point of the time, I mean, if we uh, believe the Big Bang uh, model, so at what point of time, the, the very first radiation start. Okay, so that's the that's the point we wanted to address here. For example, this is a very 
uh, well known uh, picture for example this is our provided we believe in the big bang hypothesis i i wrote hypothesis because still there are a lot lots of i mean the other models are also there for example we are now here okay present it at redshift zero at this point the redshift is zero okay and uh, if we look back in time the big man uh, model says that there is a no I, we are not going to talk about the big bang model but this is uh, required for example if there is you know, some big bang happens here and uh, so for example um, if we look back in time so at some point of the time we know that uh, uh, due to inflation uh, uh, so when the universe expand uh, suddenly at some point of the time there is a first because it was a hot plasma then there was we know the thomson's due to thomson's scattering okay is scattered then when due to sudden expansion of course the entire things will cool and at some point of the time electron and photon will uh, combine which is known as recombination epoch at that time okay and due to that event okay uh, uh, when the uh, this first uh, atomic hydrogen form okay so uh, the, the 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 photon can then travel right so and that basically the last scattering surface which we already i, I think we are already taught in this course and when the photon travel of course there is a interaction between the matter i mean with the plasma and so that is basically our cmb so that is the only things which is available i mean even in the entire uh, world so this cmb is there, even in our room also okay <laughs> ah, so that that so that's the we know around uh, and that varies with the red shift right so this is the only source uh, available okay and then uh, we have a uh, the universe was dark and at some point so there's a very fast start form okay why it is important because at that so now we can have a different type of metallicity right even in our in our body also if you think there are lots of metallicity from where it came okay uh, uh, so uh, for example so that's why for example when the first start form of course we are just talking about the uh, radiation that ionize this surrounding medium right and so uh, in the in the very beginning only at, at uh, atomic hydrogen was there right but then when it reon, reon, uh, uh, and the, the very first star form only out of this atomic hydrogen pure atomic hydrogen okay but uh, then the it evaluate okay and at some point it also die you know there are nuclear fusion i mean we are not going into that but in the, the next generation of stars okay when suppose it for it explodes as a supernova okay then the the metal which has been produced inside the star it just come out okay and the uh, the second generation of stars that form within that polluted gas now it is no more the pure atomic hydrogen it's a polluted right the next generation start form that and the so like this okay so uh, so that's why it is important so in the initial enrichment of the igm with the heavy elements so so basically this is the things we which we should be this is this should be very clear if this is the big bang of early universe then there is a dark ages so this things is generally the cosmologist people or the particle physicists they are still i mean working on that okay so the population one star means which is the present day uh, present day stars like the sun sun is although the intermediate but still it's a high metallicity okay metal if we just look back in time for example population through form out of purely atomic hydrogen right so this is clear right that form at redshift 20 or 30 in between which means this is around 400 million years after the big bang at this point the red recombination happened 300000 around yes. 11 1100 11. okay first star form at redshift between 20 to 30 approximate right <clears throat> so this is around 
around 400 million years after the Big Bang. This is approximate, right? So, then the next generation of star forms, so when it dies, explodes as a supernova, then as I said, the, the second generation of star, which means the second generation uh, star now carries some more metallicity. So, the metallicity, so in theoretically, this is zero metallicity stars because metallicity, uh, when we calculate metallicity, it, uh, that is respect with uh, hydrogen. Okay. So this is the metallicity, say, around, uh, uh, we heard about, uh, we heard about this uh, poor metallicity stars, very poor metallicity stars, extremely poor metallicity stars. These, these are all this second generation, right? This weekly and this heavier metals. And this population uh, star is, you know, as a, so, okay. So we will talk about this one. Why? Because there are lots of data available for population one, even for population two. Lots of data are available, so we can easily, uh, you can download, uh, we, we can download and, you know, we can analyze it. But what about this one, which is just 300 million years, almost, so which is almost 1300 billion years before. You don't have any, you don't have any uh, source. You don't have any data, data available, right? So how do you, how do we um, know what is the, you know, how the universe has been evolved from that state to this state, right? No data available, no telescope. Because uh, through telescope, we can only observe the higher redshift, I, I think seven or eight higher redshift star has been uh, discovered, right? But it happens around 20. So that's why it is uh, important. Okay, so these are the questions. When and how did the cosmic garbages end? Not known. <laughs> okay, how did the first source of light form after the cosmic garbages? How did the first galaxy evolve? How did the metal form within stars or enrich the ISM uh, interstellar medium or intergalactic medium? And how did the uni universe evolve from a simple state to the complex state? So whatever I have told you. So this is the only thing is that this is available. Only observational evidence. Right. So the only things we can do, take this initial condition and uh, we can use this simple uh, Boltzmann equation, okay, to solve this. Okay, we can have two kind of Boltzmann equation, collision and collisionless, right? Yes. So according to the this Big Bang model, we have a uh, dark matter, right? As well as dark energy. If we just take that model. So the okay. So here we can conclude, conclude that we just need this some numerical simulation to understand this dy dynamical process, right? So this is this is the overview. So I think the definition is now clear. The very first start. Uh, we talk about these simulations, then some some of the results, okay? And uh, this is the uh, we are now working on these things and some. Uh, upcoming work. <clears throat> oh, just try to understand, try to uh, make the entire, you know, because this is kind of a subject which is kind of cosmology and the present day. So we need to connect. Okay. Mm, for example, uh, in the cosmological principle, so what we do, how we do? The cosmological principle says that universe is almost isotropic. Okay. In every direction and homogeneous, but there is also, of course, some fluctuations are there, right? So, this is the first cosmological principle, so which is proved, okay? The next thing is that how to, we have this equation, Einstein equation is available, okay? And the solution is also given by Friedman equations, okay? So, we need to basically, Friedman equation, basically this DVD term, okay? So, when we solve something, we need to some evolution equation, right? So this is the, and by which we do, this is this thing is called lambda CDM model, is a constant. Whole dark matter means where the velocity is the, uh, uh, less than the uh, speed of light. Mm. Okay, and we know uh, these are the, that uh, the baryonic matter is very less, only 4 to 5%, dark matter is around 25 to 27%, and the rest is given by this mass energy density, which is dark energy. So this is the kind of the model we have in, in our mind, okay? 
So the equations I think we have already done in our courses, but this is the kind of the cosmological content we need uh, this one, right? And the CMB we already, we have, so this is, this we can take as an initial condition. This is, this basically tells us that this fluctuation, okay. Huh. Uh, this is from the Planck uh, satellite and we have, uh, this is the universe. So whatever we have told, I just put the picture here. Now, how then, then how, how uh, do you do that? So, so what kind of uh, equations we need, okay. So as I said, the dynamics of the collision less. So we have an symbol of particle. Then we can, we can, uh, we can calculate this um, uh, uh, continuity equation, right? Uh, mass conservation, momentum conservation, energy conservation. Okay. So basically, we have a non-interacting dark matter. Uh, this is uh, described by the collision less Boltzmann equation, and this Friedman limitier model. Okay, which is the dynamical model. So this is basically n-body simulation, right? So this is one thing we need. That is for the dark matter, right? So we first do a dark matter simulation, okay? Then within this dark matter, we will see uh, that there is some, high, basically this will give you the hierarchical structure formation, the, which means the small matter, they uh, combine to form a uh, bigger, Okay, then within this hello, we can see there is a there is a accumulation of gases, uh, not gases, the baryonic matter, because there are also electron, there are lots of uh, deuterium, hydrogen, uh, the other, okay, basically some amount of helium, okay, and there you can have all the physics which you wanted to include, because for example, collapse, we need to study the collapse, this is, that is the main thing, then thermal energy, because these are associated rotational energy, chemical edit, entropy, heating and cooling of the gas, instability. We need to, so this is extremely complicated and we need a, you know, lot of groups to work on them. And then there is gravitational field in an expanding background space. So this is really challenging and this is done by Volker uh, Pringle, how to model the gravity. So there is a, just it, has also worked on that. That's a very, you know, his contribution is to, you know, model that tree PM method. I mean, this is this you, you uh, how you model the gravity, right? Because that is the main, you know, ingredient, right? So this is given. Uh, so we basically need this three kind of equations, right? So this we put into the simulations. Huh? Okay, now, so this is the cosmo, all the cosmological simulation, they basically do this. Okay, now which simulation you use, you, it depends on you, but that's the thing we need to solve. Okay, for example, I show you the uh, um, simulation by Naoki Joshida. I am a fan of him. Okay, so here, so basically he takes uh, this uh, homogeneous, uh, your uniform density in this space, but some fluctuation is there. It's a kiloparsec uh, box, okay? And then it just collapses. Okay, this is the simulation by Tom Abel. Another is from Stanford. So uh, he started his simulation from Redshift 100. And when, you, when he solved just these three equations, okay, At C, at when the red shift is going to the present day, see this structure formation is so which we have read uh, equations. Okay, so this is the you know visualization. See, see how the structure formation is coming and see. So these are the filaments structure. And at this point, at around red shift, they see there is a strong density. You know, here the number density. This is the only dark matter. But here at some point there is a Num, uh, uh, some baryonic. So what it happens is a um, is a formation of the basically these sides are the formation of the halo. We call it mini halo. Why mini halo? Because the mass is comparatively less. The mass is around ten to the power six to ten to the power seven solar mass, but it is still in less. So that's why it is called mini halo, right? So of course there is a potential well and 
we can calculate the virialized temperature or the, the mass of the halo, basically the virialized mass. When we always call it virialized, like 2T plus E is equal to, okay. So basically that one, right? And uh, and the temperature, virialized temperature is around 1000 Kelvin. So we have a potential oil of the dark matter halo, temperature 1000 Kelvin, some baryonic matter which is coming inside the halo. When it halo, of course it will be, the baryonic matter will be shocked to 1000 Kelvin, right? But because it's a uh, combined of hydrogen, electron, okay, so so there will be some chemical reactions. Oh, huh? And uh, when the, this chemical re reaction, so what is the cooling mechanism when this atomic hydrogen will form the molecular hydrogen? So there is, we know from the physics, there is a rotational vibrational emission, right? Through these things, it will uh, cool the surrounding gas, okay? Then from 1000 Kelvin, now the gas will come to the 200 Kelvin, right? when it is coming down and the also the mass is coming all right so at some point when the mass is coming the mass ac accumulation so there will be for example gravitational en en energy because it has a gravity okay at the same time its thermal energy also will increase right so there is a uh, balance thermal energy will try to uh, expand okay so at some point within this halo there will be some stable uh, so gravitational energy and rotational energy, uh, 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 thermal energy, right? So that is called the genes, okay? So that is the size of the plant, okay? So all things happen here. So this is the projection of the gas, gas density of 1000 of the simulation volume approximately centered at the pre-galactic object within which the star are formed, are taken around redshift, this one, this one. So here that is formed. Okay, so this is Abel 2002 paper, very highly cited, more than 1500 citation. Okay, so all this paper I will show, the, uh, these are all, uh, okay, and this is again, this, uh, this is in 2002 and this is in 2006. Okay, uh, now Kijoshi does, he has also seen at J, J equal to 17, see, all the sites are coming. This is the st structure formation. Right now, so whatever I have told, if we now zoom in, I'm sorry, this is now Kijoshida 2008. If we just zoom in this thing, as I as I told you, this is the mini halo of the si size. Look at the size. This is very important. 300 parsec, right? Huh. This is only this one is 300 parsec. Okay, within this 300 parsec, the mass is uh, 10 to the 6 solar mass. Within that, the molecular cloud form, which I have just told you, right? Uh, molecular uh, cloud form around 5%. Okay. When the molecular cloud again collapses, you understand, right? So the gas accumulation of the gas is coming. So gravity is increasing. Also th thermal energy. So there is a balance called the genes uh, mass. It has a size. The size, the genes, uh, the radius is arrow of the order of Five, three to five per sec, okay? And then it has a mass of the at order of 1000 to 2000 solar mass, mass of the gas clump, okay? And the cooling is from atomic hydrogen to molecular hydrogen, right? So that is the cooling mechanism, right? And within this, when again, it the, when the collapse continue, when the collapse continue, here the number density of the gas, number density around 10 to the power three, 10 to the 2 to 10 to the 3. Okay. And the, when the star is formed, the number density has increased around 10 to the power 18. 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 18, which means 15 order of magnitude. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So this is the kind of the your code or must resolve this thing from 300 parsec to around 25 solar radii. Right? And uh, Mm, 15 order of magnitude. Okay, so simple long sutta can't do that. <laughs> so, so that's why. So, uh, the, uh, so this is you can have this very nice paper, 2008 paper. Okay. So, so uh, Jayan, sir, uh, about the cooling mechanism. Uh, so, when it's a mini halo, you are saying that the temperature of that gas is about thousand, thousand Kelvin. That temperature is because it was collapsing and the gravitational energy no so that is the temperature of the halo 
Okay. Now, when the gas is coming, that can also have that temperature. So, uh, when the gas is coming inside the halo. Okay. Hmm. And then you are saying that the gas is now cooling. Hmm. Hmm. This gas is what? It is the atomic hydrogen or atomic hydrogen. Atomic hydrogen. Atomic hydrogen. Atomic hydrogen. But atomic hydrogen to molecular hydrogen will not cool the gas, right? Yes, yes, yes. Atomic hydrogen to molecular hydrogen. There will be, I will just talk about that. See, initially gas temperature was 1000 Kelvin, right? And then during this time, this atomic to molecular hydrogen, it will cool the gas from 1000 Kelvin to 200 Kel Kelvin. Where is the energy going? No, it's just the... No, I mean, what usually <laughs> what we say is, hmm. if there is molecular hydrogen, hmm. you have some extra energy, hmm. so that will dissociate the molecule. Here is this is also the same. But, a, but this is going in the opposite direction. Nah, H plus E minus. Yeah. H plus E minus it will form H2. And this it has been shown that uh, by this this uh, this emission, okay. This quantum state, huh? So it will it will emit. So that's why that is the first thing that it will cool. Uh I'm I, I'm just coming to the equation. So from here, I thought that I will uh, draw this picture, but okay. So from here, it cooled the gas up to 200 Kelvin and here, that is the point where the genes mass, this gravity and the thermal energy, it will, okay. Uh, what happens? It comes to genes? Genes, uh, by, uh, where, where? Become unstable or? Yes, of course. I mean, so that is the, if we ask me, what is the mass of the, uh, what is the size of the cloud? Or what is the mass of the cloud? So at, at which point? Okay, because when the gas is coming, it will accumulate, but it, it cannot go on because it has a thermal energy, right? So at some point it will, you know, counter. So at at, at the point when it to balance, that is the genes mass. Okay, and genes mass, we can in fact calculate it. You can calculate because genes mass depends on the temperature as well as the density. So we have a temperature 200 Kelvin, density 10 to the power 3. So just if you just put 10 to the power 3 and 200 Kelvin, you will get the genes mass of the order of 1000 solar mass. And here is the molecular fraction. Here also you can see molecular fraction is in increasing. Molecular fraction, which means the H2, right? From atomic, atomic uh, energy, see the molecular fraction is increasing. At this point, at this point, okay, because this is the chemi chemistry part. At this point, there is another reaction happens where so see, just one yes, yes, let, yes, yes, yes. Let me clarify. Hmm. So this cooling has nothing to do with the background cost model. This is not cooling because the universe is expanding. No, no, that is the that is the no. So I am just Th this is the gas. I think I am sort of thinking in the line of what Ritubal is saying that. If the gas is cooling, mm. then the, and you are saying that the conversion from atomic to molecular hydrogen is where all the energy is going. Yes. I understand that you need a, you need lower energy for molecular hydrogen to persist. Yes. You are having the molecular hydrogen already present. Huh. And from the vibrational level, you conditionally excite and ex ex exactly it, radiation. It's a uh, loss. Radiation loss. Exactly, this one. Exactly, exactly. You exactly. have a, you are creating molecular That's hydrogen. Right. Exactly, exactly. Then those molecular hydrogen has vibration level, which is lower, lower. to atomic hydrogen transition level. Yeah. So you positionally first excite and then you yeah. excite. It's a, you excite yeah, energy yeah, yeah. lost from the yeah. system and you will yeah. the it, there is a dissociation, collisional induced emission, all these things. So, but at lower density, I, I just, I thought that I will go uh, step by step. So at lower density, this is happening. Okay. Right. So basically you are releasing this one. Okay. So they, that time this fraction was this. So these things actually it coming. So this is all have been verified or, you know, so at low density only because you have only this one and, and that one. So by this reaction, actually, this the gas pulls from 1000 to 200 Kelvin. Then when the gas again collapses further, okay, it has been seen that at that time, this then 
this reaction is actually extremely becomes important. Okay, because by this reaction, but this happens slightly, this density. Okay, so uh, that's why I... Okay, so... So here, so same, same thing happened. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, you can, you can okay, so at that point, gas can cool faster than because by this reaction, almost all the atomic hydrogen, they form the molecular okay. hydrogen. And so this is again important. When the molecular hydrogen form, there is also release of uh, that 4.4 uh, EV electron volt, right? So that is, so that can also slightly hit the gas. At the same time, Molecular formation of molecular hydrogen can cool the gas, right? So this cooling and heating, cooling and heating also goes simultaneously. Okay, so uh, so that's a about two thousand two thousand sixteen paper only uh, this cooling and heating. We will just come to that. Okay, uh, and there are other reactions also. There are almost forty five reactions. So there is a separate. Uh, group uh, group for that. So basically, but these two are the main uh, uh, reactions. There are other reactions which can all contribute to this uh, temperature. Uh, okay, is this clear? So this collisional ionization, recombination, and radiative cooling, all these things come. Okay, so there is another because uh, we just come to the simulations. I, I must. <laughs> okay. So we have understood these things, right? So this is the entire story. Okay. Now we. So now Kijoshi does before 2011, it shows that the mass of this star is of the order of 100 solar mass. Mass of the mass of the primordial stars of the order of 100 solar mass. Okay. Every almost all the simulations has have concluded that the primordial star is massive. So, which means they cannot survive because massive stars has a shorter lifetime. We can calculate lifetime is equal to m by m star. We can calculate. Okay. But uh, that time I was doing PhD in uh, IMPRS. So, Ralph Kress and Paul Clark, they showed that. Uh, uh, so, that was the picture before 2011. Uh, they showed that actually, no, it's not the case. Actually, uh, th that is actually basically a disk, okay, the entire, so the first star form, but that is surrounded by a massive disk, and this disk, so they can use a technique called sink particle technique, I will come to that, so the first star form, surrounded by the disk, and the disk can then evolve, and we can actually calculate the instability, so lots of physics are included here, we can calculate by Tumre parameter, you have a disk, uh, surface density, angular velocity, we, we can calculate the Tumle parameter is a parameter by which it can shows okay uh, that whether uh, it's a stable or unstable okay so when that uh, uh, evolved so this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, if if you count TSF is zero then after twenty seven years sixty two years we can see some portion of the disk becoming becoming locally unstable and that portion separate itself from the rest of the structure okay that again can evolve and form a stars, right? So basically, you have a multiple stars, rather than previously it was a single massive stars, but now uh, after the disk fragmentation, we actually get a multi multiple stars of various masses, okay? So that's in 2011, and then uh, the same things, uh, Hirano also so showed that, yes, uh, it's a multiple star systems, okay? So now this is the, uh, this is the uh, picture that primordial star can be massive at the same time can be is just like a present day star formation. So it has a different mass, but still uh, still we don't know what is the IMF, right? So this is the this is the point we should this is the de definition. So primordial stars, uh, it's a found within dark matter halo, redshift uh, metal free. Okay. Now during my PhD, what we, I have what is my contribution? is to collapse of the, this gas, okay? And uh, we did this. So there are two types of uh, method we know. 
uh, one is Eulerian, one is Lagrangian. In Eulerian, we generally uh, take that, um, we know uh, Eulerian method, right? So basically we uh, calculate the uh, quantity at this point, right? Finite difference, finite volume method. But in the astrophysical place, there is a um, lots of, you know, uh, density uh, variance. Uh, so suppose, so there is a, uh, density, high density, the number density is very high. So we may miss, if we use the Eulerian method, we may miss this portion, but there is also, I mean, you can, what you can do, we can again uh, make it smaller bit and we can do. So computational, it will take lots of time unnecessarily, okay, in the Eulerian method. You understand, right? So there is a, another method, improved Eulerian method is called adaptive. Adaptive means where there is a density variation, you will only you will only uh, uh, do in that portion, right? There is another method. It's called Lagrangian because in Lagrangian we have a this del del t uh, that is there. Is just it's just like we are just flowing. Uh, I mean we are sitting in the reference frame. Okay. So in the Lagrangian method, so we can we can do this thing. Uh, so there this fluid dynamics comes into the picture okay so the entire gadget the the simulation we use they use this lagrangian technique which means when when where there is a high density region automatically it will send some this is a particle based method it will send some more more particle there how okay so it's called the smooth particle hydrodynamics smooth particle hydrodynamics where so this is just the technique so where there is a for example you, you have a lots of, you know, particle is there. Okay, now centered around this particle, you take a volume. Okay, mathematically, it's called a kernel volume. Okay, and you uh, you try to calculate the density within this kernel volume, where the radius, where the radius is, you can change. Okay, if, the, if there is a high density, okay, so basically, uh, 4 by 3 pi r, Pi, uh, right. Which cube is equal to if I take m um, and if this is the number, this is the constant. How how many particles you want there? So if the h increase, okay. So they will adjust, right? So basically you take the contribution, for example, there is another particle, you take this, this contribution, there is another particle, you can take this contribution. So basically it's a, uh, 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 you know, you are taking the average, huh? uh, you are, and you are calculating the density. So it will auto automatically adjust your, uh, radius and the uh, this is called the smoothing length okay so the volume will automatically so we use this one so this is called the so basically any field any field can be smooth okay by using this uh, convolution yeah okay so this is this is the physical this is just the mathematics of that okay so if there is a field you can just calculate the density okay we use uh, this one and whatever I have told you. So the, this one. So actually I, I wrote, wrote it wrong. Okay. So this is basically H cube. Okay. And this is the momentum equation. So basically we are solving this. This pressure is nothing. The outside pressure and the internal pressure we can just subtract. So basically this we are solving this rigidity equation. Okay. And this is the equation of state. Right, we solve this, and okay. As I said, I, I have already so these things we have uh, included the all the chemistry, uh, and as I said, in the, when the collapse continues at the high density, this equation becomes effective. There are other equations which I have not put; it is there in the paper. Okay, there is another. I also included the rotation. Ro rotation means the cloud also ha uh, uh, has a ro uh, angular momentum, right? So we can put this angular momentum by using a parameter beta zero, this rotational energy by gravitational uh, energy. 
simple you can just take a mass genes mass radius number density put give some rotations okay so that you can see how the rotation can affect your final uh, okay free fall time some crossing time of course the free fall time is shorter the, so, so the gas will collapse okay so uh, this thing particle what is that thing particle technique is a, as i said a very high density technique when the collapse reached to that density you just separate it from the rest of the gas due to fragmentation and this also what is the you can ask me what is the at what point i i can say that this is my protoster right when the number density is around say around 10 to the 14 temperature is around 1000 kelvin we can say that this is my protoster so this is the this we have taken this from bet 2000 paper and i included all these things into my gadget to simulations and it was uh, i i talked to you know that larson uh, so he was there uh, so there actually that was my first presentation paper so uh, yeah so we include all these things uh, chemical reactions uh, chemistry uh, and this is the result for example if you just take a cloud mass okay we can see there are lots of fragmentations okay this is in 500 in from 2 percent to 500 in now this is uh, I think we have understood, right? So uh, the primordial star has a, can we say, multiple system. We have a lot of mass. Now the question is that because this chemistry and the rotation is important, the question is that how this uh, initial rotation and the initial uh, uh, presence of the, uh, for example, some clouds has more number of molecular hydrogen, some cloud has less number of molecular hydrogen, how it is affecting our fragmentation process, right? So that we do. Uh, uh, so we have we have seen we have uh, taken for two different halo. For example, everything is same. Only the initial condition is changing. For example, this is for different uh, uh, different molecular hydrogen. Okay, uh, how many fractions are there? So this is one thing. Uh, uh, for example, the which has more 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 molecular hydrogen. Okay, of course. Uh, in that case, the cooling becomes more efficient. Okay, so in that case, we can see that number of stars, uh, uh, number of stars is more. Okay, why it is important? Because till now, we don't know what is the initial mass function because uh, our first galaxies depends on our initial mass, mass function. So we have given some kind of idea. Uh, I didn't get, what is this plot actually? This is the, this is the green plot is uh, represent the gas which have more number of molecular hydrogen production of more number of molecular hydrogen okay, okay. that gives say around uh, number 10 uh, and this is the number so, of so, so you are you are thinking of molecular hydrogen as a summation of sing particles or no sing particle means a star which has That's been right. formed so you have a gas the gas collapse and forms a start. Form a stars, multiple stars. Correct. Now, how the initial condition of the gas is affecting our, because we don't know anything, That's right? right. That's how right. it is affecting our final multiple system. Correct. Some gas can have a different type of angular momentum. Correct. No, okay, higher or lower. Some gas have a different type of chemical uh, elements. So how this is actually affecting the entire nonlinear collapse and fragmentation. Okay, so that means the x-axis is the stellar mass. Uh, x-axis is the uh, stellar mass, the star. and uh, the number of the stars. Okay, so this green, so the green curve is a. This is uh, this is a paper which shows uh, that which means this this means it has a more number of molecular hydrogen. Okay, some gas has more number of production of more number of molecular hydrogen. We have taken this rate. Uh, the production rate, production rate as well as the dissociation rate. Okay, put that into our simulation to see that the same thing is there. Okay, but see uh, that uh, if the if the gas can be cooled uh, efficiently, in that case, the number of stars are more. So that means halo one and halo two are two representative halos of the same simulation. Two mini halos. Two mini halos in the same simulation. No, two two different halos. So the, is the simulation same or I mean for, for this hello hello one and, and hello two 
okay we can see if the initial condition is everything is same the ultimate result is different that's what i'm saying ha, so that's yeah. the same this, is, this is for ha, hello one. and we have done another for hello two okay and then uh, one i see fh07 so are the prescriptions the physical prescriptions are different the rates are different. I mean, what is the difference between uh, FH07 and AB? Yeah, FH07 and FH and AB and 02 that gives you the different chemical rate. That's right. Okay. okay. So different chemical rate has an effect of the absolutely. Okay. Formation. Right. So, 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 so you are starting at the radius of 2008. And following that situation, hmm. is that correct? And what is the minimum particle? No, I I started with two per sec. You started with two per two per sec. And uh, what is the minimum particle size there? Uh, the the minimal uh, is only six AU. This one. Six AU. The gas at the two per sec region. It collapse, okay. And what is the mass of that? So, that so point zero six. Point zero six. This is the this is this is the R. This is the rho. Okay. So I am asking the okay. mass resolution. Mass resolution is around ten raised to minus four. Ten raised to minus four. Solar mass. Solar mass. For hundred. N particle system, smooth particle system. So if you have a put this hundred particle here, okay, the mass resolution is n raised to minus four. Solar mass. Okay. So if you just put n raised to minus four times hundred. Well, that sort of gives you the green mass thing. Okay. It will be clear. This is the density. Now, number density here, 10 raised to 3. Okay, this is the radius. When the gas collapse, for example, this is time T1, this is time T2, this is time T3. Okay, this is the, with the radius. As the time, this is the free fall time. As the, as the time goes, okay, free fall time is root over density. Okay, it falls with the density. We can see that number density here becomes around 10 to the 14, right? So this has a power law r to the minus 2.2, okay? So when the gas collapse, so at that point, you can also calculate the temperature. Here, the radius is around 6 AU, and the temperature is around, how, uh, around I think 1000 Kelvin. So if you put it, the genes mass at that, Temperature at that number density, 10 to the power 14, you will see your sink radius. I mean, sink means the protostar. Protostar radius becomes 6 AU, mass becomes 0 0.6 solar mass. That's the that's our resolution. Clear? Okay. So this is our stars. So we can all the stars have that, all the stars have that, okay. The, in the next paper, what we put, we put the angular momentum. If the initial, if the initial angular momentum is different, okay. One interesting point we uh, observe, although the angular momentum, so these are the, for initial angular momentum, this is actually angular momentum per unit mass, specific angular momentum. After the collapse, almost all the angular momentum have the same profile. So these are the initial condition, uh, initial angular momentum. Okay, this is the after the collapse. I mean, when the density is around 10 to the 14, which means one thing here from here, we can that higher angular momentum, they lose or they distribution more angular momentum. So to follow this same curve. So we calculate this is around proportional to M or M, M point one one two five, which means our when the cloud collapse, so they redistribute, they redistribute the angular momentum, right? What so, is beta, by the way, sorry, I'm missing. What is beta, beta? beta is the, this rotational energy by gravitational potential energy. Okay. So this is the parameter which can give you the rotation. You can play with this uh, number. number, okay? So this is in, again, 2016. 
there is another then we uh, what is the thermal and the dynamical evolution see this modeling the code takes around 3 uh, 3 years and then the results will then you can have a you know uh, so then the surface density and the temperature within two, 2000 au we can just check for different beta see this is a low rotating cloud higher beta means higher rotating cloud and this is almost 10 percent beta very very high rotating cloud so high rotating cloud means so this is obvious so the the star has been formed from the far from the center but see for low rotating cloud it is very condensed okay and this is the temperature evolutions uh, uh, okay this is another very interesting point so this is uh, uh, some of the so this is the uh, when we put the velocities of all the stars velocities so this is the velocities between say within 20 minus means just just the direction okay this is the velocity when we calculate the escape velocities okay we can see this is the escape velocities ratio of the radius velocity escape velocities with the radius we can see some of the stars for different rotating cloud okay from low rotating to higher rotating some of the stars are actually escaping that's a very important some of the star is escaping okay now when the sum of the star is escaping and uh, that is our uh, okay so uh, i mean what is the fate of these stars for so escaping what the halo escaping the Post dark matter halo or escaping or? from the cloud escaping from the cloud gas cloud okay. so that means the gravitational potential of the cloud it is, is what is giving you the uh, right it is yeah it, it is still uh, maybe within the halo but it is the clump size is or, or is only three per sec so it is coming from the coming out from the potential well of a just just like a rocket coming potential uh, well from the earth the same thing some of the stars stars are coming out. So how are you calculating the gravitational uh, potential? You, 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 that you, you, initially or it is dynamically changing when the, the uh, protostars are also forming? Potential are uh, protostars are forming within the clumps. So you we we can so if the protostar is here, we can calculate the escape velocity. We know the mass. Mass of what? We know the mass of the cloud. But that mass is uh, redistributed. The mass is redistributed, but it is still within the clump, right? But that will not give me the escape velocity from the clump. No. Suppose you have you you, you whatever is the density. It should be a runaway thing. That's what you're exactly talking. runaway thing. Yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, it's the a protostar has uh, captured maximum of the mass of the cloud itself. Not necessary. Not uh, not most of the so protostar is being formed. It is of of course accreting the matter from the from the clumps. So yes. The star and surrounding region uh. should have the maximum amount of mass. We can that see was within the uh, within, within the, the clumps matter, within the clumps within the clumps. So that will provide the maximum potential at the uh, protostar itself. The the star uh, the the mass of the clumps is around say of the order of thousand solar mass. Okay. Now, if there are no radiation, it will keep on accreting. Okay. Your point is that suppose your star is here. Your star is here. So whatever is within the, you have a, of course, you have a, this density profile. Rho is proportional to R to the minus 2.2. You can just simply calculate your mass, how many mass is there within, within that, within, within that uh, radius. Okay. From say R, uh, 0 to this is the position of the stars. You can simply calculate what is the mass is there and you, you can calculate the escape velocity from there. It's not that much difficult. No, I, I think maybe, mm. maybe I misunderstood yes, something. Yes, so yes. I'm thinking of a cloud yes. and you have a bunch of stars formed within, within the, the cloud. cloud. Within the cloud. Huh. Now, some this, of the stars is escaping the cloud. Yeah, so these stars will have a distribution of radial velocities. Yes. But then some of these radial velocities you are saying will be higher than the gravitational potential that of is the clump. required to do exactly. the binding. Exactly. But then suppose one of them escapes or a couple of them. What is the number? I mean, how many ah, that's stars a good are point. That is That is very low. This we got. This, uh, we'll come to that point. Okay. This, this we got. Some, some star is escaping. And if we look at carefully, some of the stars which are actually a higher rotating cloud, that is escaping. 
So we just put all the stars there. Okay. Some of the star is escaping. We can only we can, can, uh, conclude these things. Okay. Now. Okay. Now the thing is that you can't run the gadget to simulation because gadget to simulation is already, you know, it has uh, the, the simulation just stop. Nobody could do it. The simulation just stop after say only uh, thousands years years of evolution. For example, if you remember, if you remember, Paul Clark has run the simulation is only say hundred and ten years. Okay, but by our improved techniques, you see after the star formation, we run only hundred and ten years. Okay, most of the simulation stop around 1000 okay even if you look at it clearly we have gone up to 4000 years around, around 5000 or 6000 years i mean of the order of okay after that the simulation stop and of course the higher rotating clumps uh, it took around one month to run the simulation took one month to run okay the problem is that so you don't know uh, what is the i mean what is the next uh, uh, i mean as the time goes on what will happen to those stars okay that's the point so here the simulation okay so then we thought with uh, just it that we can just take a simple semi-analytical model here what you can do till till this point most of the simulation they include the radiative feedback just like uh, i told you na, takashi uh, hosokua uh, the the point is that what is the, the the main point is that what is the mass of these stars okay because then, then it will give a uh, give us an histogram. Okay, we know uh, we, we from a simulation we can get the velocities, mass, and we can just see what is the IMF. But that is only for few thousands of years. Okay. Now uh, we thought that okay, let's do that. We just take this velocity, mass, and the time, huh, and the position of these stars. Okay. Forget about this uh, and the background radiation, uh, uh, background density. We can take this rho portion to the minus 2.2. Okay, put it into the simple classical field. Okay, so that's exactly what I did. Okay, this is the star, uh, this is the position of the stars, mass of the stars, velocity, velocity, rotational velocity, radial velocity. We know. Okay, just solve this equation. This is just simple MSC problem. Okay. D2 or DT2. Okay. And this is the drag force because when the star is moving, a star is moving in a gaseous medium. Right? So, of course, it will, there will be friction. That friction we have taken this term. Okay. This is the speed of the uh, medium, rotational velocity, and component, phi component of the velocity. Okay. Till now, there is no, no radiation. And the, when the star is moving inside the uh, gas clumps, it can also accrete. So, which accretion rate? Because we don't know which accretion we can take. We have taken the bond divide accretion rate, DMD. Just solve this equation using this wrong Gupta method. And this M, you can just calculate this thing in, in close mass. Okay. So, this is very recent. The first we proceed in uh, uh, this uh, uh, during the core time uh, proceeding. And then. So, uh, yeah. so this uh, is. What? These are equation of motion of the stars. So R is what? R is the position of the star. Yes. Position of the stars. Calculated from center what? of the cloud. From the center of the cloud. And how do you define the center of the cloud? It's just the positional center or it's the mass center, center of mass. Center of mass. But that's, that's going to change. change. That's going to continuously change. That's going to continuously change. Ah, so your 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 things is no, these, these things you are just taking a semi analytical model. So that's why I'm saying right. when the star is not at the center of your box, huh. the potential is not required. Huh. I think this is a fast, fast time calculation that if we can set, probably if I understood mm -hmm. it correctly, that here we are not using this effect that continuously in the cloud the center of mass is going to change because if the Stars escape, then it's a continuously a dynamic process. I think what probably I understood from the uh, description is that you are trying to model that there's a R phi R and phi coordinate of the star, and what will be the equation of motion of the star given that there is this 
friction in the cloud, etc. Am, I, am and, I right? Yes, and 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 there is this background density. And and there is this, this background, background density. density. See, here, here, of course, there are, as you said, there are many disadvantages. For example, background density is changing. Yes. We, we, we can't do that here. Look at your simulation. Huh. Huh. The center where the rule is hidden. Hmm. That's not always the center of your box. No. Not necessarily. Not necessary. That is very important. See, when you are doing something, you must assume you must you because if, <laughs> you have a you basically you have a because you you can't go on after that. No, right. That. So what you can do? So this is the peak. You can see. That depends on you can pick the okay center of mass if you're the center. You can also take the center and then calculate the uh, calculate the radius from there. But generally, generally when the first star form at the very center, okay, and the other star the disk is around that uh, disk. Uh, the disk is formed around that stars, okay, and the fra fragmentations are also happen centered around this first star. That is called the core. But at the same time, core, even in the simulation, core is also not at the center, slightly deviate from the center. So you can take the very first stars. So basically, so this is your stars, whatever in the form here, that is at 1000 AU, not at the center. That's uh, whichever is expressing as, that as more I, than uh, 200, 300 AU. As I said, that when the gas is collapsed, first thing the gas is collapsed to a core. You can take core as the center because your disk is centered around that core, and the, the core is almost at the center. So I guess one thing we, we would be interesting. So if you look at your equations and you integrate them, hmm. like what are the scales you are using? I mean, for example, R goes from zero to what? what uh, R R goes from zero to two per sec. <laughs> because that is the size of your cloud. You can take everything. This is the size of the cloud. This is the density so background. Just seeing that how, what, what, how, how the star is moving, star is moving the and, and how far you can evolve the stars. Yeah. What is the what is the because by that simulation you can't go after three three thousand years. But here you can in fact run your simulation for million million years here, million of years within two minutes, two to three minutes. Right? It it has become very interesting uh, and Rifari actually praised our uh, this 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 method. Uh, so, so but let's see some results. Huh. But here, the, the problem was the time step. So here actually just this help us to, you know, how to, because time step is such a quantity, even in a simple, you know, single changes, the result can be very different. Okay. So then we have a, uh, this uh, CFL condition. Uh, so you can just have a look in the Google, what is CFL condition? So that we put like the velocity and the acceleration. So automatically the time step, because time step is very important. Right. So here, so here is the result. Uh, I think you have seen that paper. So here actually, why the result is important, even if the uh, equations are very simple, some of the some of the stars are actually, so this is the escape velocity around 12.4. Some of the stars have a red stars are actually escaping. Some of the stars is revolving around the revolving around the uh, clouds. Cloud Okay, these, these are the green. See, these are which is the green, so that is around thousands of years. Okay, around 10 to the 3. But, and now we can run basically those stars around millions of years. And by the millions of years, it has already escaped. So, this is the size of the cloud 3 per sec. 3 per sec is around 10 to the 5 here. So, it has already escaped. So, which means, so there are two types of stars. One can revolve around and some of the stars can escape okay now the next question is that then actually this this is uh thanks to the referee he told that okay let's see the let's have a accretion rate plot see the accretion rate for those stars which is actually escaping accretion rate is very small 10 raised to min minus 9 okay but the accretion rate for these stars is around 10 raised to minus 1. interestingly this is very match with the simulations because till now we didn't know through because simulation, uh, we don't know because from here we can say that bond while accretion rate is actually very actually uh, primordial star likely to follow the bond while accretion rate because this we have put it in hand. But okay, the accretion rate is very similar because the primordial accretion rate is around 10 to minus 1 to 10 to minus 2 is very high. 
it gives you another things that actually there are two types of stars, two types of primordial stars. Those who have very high accretion rate that stay within the st center, that may become very massive. But there are other st stars, okay, which can actually escape the cluster that have a very low mass. Okay, so that's the that's the result. And we can calculate even, you, you can also calculate that back calculation. Which of the stars which formed after the Big Bang can still be, you can still find those stars. So, which uh, means, so, uh, yeah. Just one, huh. one point, because, hmm. because as we saw that the escape velocity is related to the gravitational potential. And the hmm. gravitational potential will, will be led Will be will be determined by the mass of the molecular cloud. Mm. So that means what which which uh, at which threshold? I mm. mean, what what is the velocity threshold for stars to escape or not escape? That will have a distribution, right? Because that depends on the distribution of the mass of the cloud. For this cloud, this is some. This but is that is around eleven to. We have for many clouds we have. Uh, then, yeah, between eleven to thirteen. And what are the typical mass of those clouds? Mass, yeah, around of the order of genes mass, 1,000 to 3,000 solar mass. Okay. Okay. We have done for many different, uh, this is around, so this is, for this specific, this is 2, 12, and 12, this is between 11 to 13. Okay. But at the same time, it does not have a, a radiation till now. Okay. So, and another thing, if the, you can tell me, the stars which has been formed from after the Big Bang, if we can still find that star today, which means that star has been survived for 13.7 billion years. To the back calculation. Survive of what? I mean... Survive they must have died, but uh, because no... Survive. That we don't know. For that, you need a full chemical evolution. But what I am asking, if a star, for example, what is the lifespan of the... If the lifespan of the star is simple, if the lifetime of the star is 13.7 billion years, what will be the is maximum mass? Just have first hand calculation, it, it, it gives around 0 0.8 solar mass or less than one solar mass. Okay, which means if the stars, I mean, no chemical evolution, nothing. If the star are very less, if, the, if some of the stars, which has been formed less than 0 0.8 solar mass, there is a possibility, possibility, we don't know. There is a possibility that they can still be found in our galaxy. So, how can your calculation is showing that? That is the answer. Your result, how it is showing that? that it is, it, 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 it till does not show. What I am just concluding that some of the study is escaping. Escaping it, from the, your clumps. Smaller clumps. It may happen, it can come to the zero main sequence jams zero age main sequence or if it can enter the main sequence uh, it survive the main sequence starts you can why 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 i am just throw, throwing this question because if you just look at the some previous paper there are very poor metallicity star has been found very poor metallicity star or very low mass around 0 0.5 solar mass poor metallicity star means that dead back to Poor metallicity star means that date back to times. that that area. So that actually we we are just trying to relate. Okay. So one is chemical evolution, another is dynamical means uh, dynamic. As I as I said, we we still don't know, but this is the simple calculations that uh, the stars less than 0 0.8 so if the stars have a mass, I mean if the mass accretion after the mass accretion, see if if it, it so when the star accrete, if it is inside the clump, it can accrete matter from the surroundings. If it escapes from the clump, there is nothing. So, so it can't accrete. So the mass remains the same. Yeah. Understand? You are saying that those stars will not escape. There are some stars which will not the gravitational potential. Well, huh. survival is nothing to do with escape. No, we have to be as it stars. may survive. I mean, we'll not if it is a sunlight, so all these things are there. Okay. Because we don't know, but there is a, as I said, that's a, that there is a possibility. Okay, so that's the thing. We, the, the point is that it can only happen if it, why escaping? Because after if it escaped, there is nothing. 
it can accrete the matter. So there is no possibility that it can accrete the mass. Okay. But as I said, this is, this is only the accretion. Okay. N now we put another equation, luminosity. Okay. So this is in 2011. There is a, by Takashi Hosoba, he, he included in 3D simulations and he showed that, that the disk, uh, the, the disk completely ionized and then it just gone. Okay. And the mass of the star, the single massive star is around 40, 43 solar mass. We, we, we also, this, this is in the Arnold Chaudhary's book, with the, within the same equations, now we improve that. Now we, we assume that the entire cloud is also rotating, even in the semi-analytical semi model. The, see, in the previous equation, there is no gas, gas rotation, right? Here, we take the gas rotation also. So now the uh, effective uh, is Vx minus Vx gas, right? Solve this equation, we also take the luminosity. Why? We assume that accretion, uh, the energy, it is coming. Okay, some of some of some fraction is also it's losing. Okay, and when we can also calculate the radiation pressure at some point and calculate what is the radi if the radiation pressure exceeds the gravitational, uh, huh? Yes, it, it just stop. It means the Eddington limit. Okay, so because we have to assume something, right? So we have to include some physics, okay, to just get something. So if we if you just uh, you use that, okay, and uh, so at that at that point, if you just uh, uh, for example, if you have a opacity chi, you can calculate the lim lim luminosity, okay. So just uh, 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 equating that, you can get this one, okay. Just you include that, okay, right. So now we also have a rotation of the gas. Gas is rotating, star is also rotating. If the star is rotating in the same direction, it will add, if it is different, uh, so it is the effective velocity. And we see, this is the uh, XY projection. See, some of the star, the rays are actually escaping, even after including this uh, radiation, lumina, radiation pressure, okay? Some of the stars see how it is, Roaming around the clouds. Okay, and if we see, it actually very you know uh, uh, comparable with the simulations uh, result. See the mass. It depends on the f. Okay, if the uh, you have uh, this parameter, you can change this parameter. Even you can also uh, just do it, uh, do like this. Okay, for different type of stars, for 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 the for the uh, uh, for the uh, massive stars uh, also. The mass is actually we can we have been able to uh, constant some mass that is of the order of say 10 to around uh, 20, 30, 40. Okay. The simulation, the entire simulation after chemical evolution and many other things, they got around 43 solar mass. We are also getting that depending on the simulation. So and this is also <laughs> very nicely, it is actually kind of a, some scaling relation. A plus so mass of the stars, the final mass of the protostars depends on this root f. Okay, so this uh, we uh, so this is we have just submitted. So Lefari is, is asking. Lefari is asking only one thing. F is what the efficiency. The no, no, no. The fraction of the energy that is in fraction of the in, incoming energy converted into the radiation. Okay. Yeah, that, I think that's what I meant. That's the radiation, uh, radiation efficiency. Fraction. Okay, refer is, is, is asking one thing, I can also tell you, refer is asking, see, you have put this, the problem in the semi-analytical is that you can, of course, uh, do this uh, with using fifth order Ronge Gutta method, but what is your, the actually the, your background density is also changing, right, which we can't do, for that I need a formula, how the background, background density is changing, we don't know, actually there is no paper which can show me, how the row is changing, row is changing with R, but how the row is changing with T, we simply don't know because it's just coming. You understand the background density, the disk is changing, right? Because there is a no, so uh, you have a disk, disk has a uh, density, or the, how the density is changing with the time, we don't know. So we just take these things as a constant. So that's the thing. So that's the idea. Uh, with so this is with Shugalpo, uh, they, uh, one of my students. There, uh, there is another student, Shubham Rogubongshi. 
So this is a full 3D simulation. We all, all also done the this with improved 3D simulations. Okay, and uh, for more beta, you can see that how the disk structure is changing for more beta. This is with improved and with the uh, this is also this is there is no chemical, but we have experimented it with different uh, gamma. Basically, suppose you don't have the other access. So this is the kind of thinking that how to avoid the main simulations. Basically, what does your chemical reaction does? Basically, it changes your equation of state, right? Basically, P rho to the R gamma. Now, if we know that for this equation, this uh, uh, for initial density equations, your gamma is this one. Gamma has a gamma value, gamma 1. For this density, has a gamma 2. For this density, I mean, throughout the collapse, if you know the gamma C, we just did some experiment that also gives us that beautiful uh, result. So this is uh, for different gammas. We uh, did that. This is the temperature evolution. Again, here we also got. So this is the very, very, very recent one. Some of the stars are actually see this mass of the things. So your your question is that is very small. That is very small. Only see. Escaping is not sufficient. The mass also should have been very low. Then only there is a possibility that it escaped. Just this is, we can only say. Okay. And these are the projects, which the very related project. Uh, the, the first thing, the, the one going is that another, this, uh, as I said, that uh, radiative feedback. Okay. Now we are also uh, trying to that this luminosity, we are now also trying to that how it is ionizing the surrounding medium. Okay, that is also with Jasjit Shukalpur, me, and uh, Professor Abraham Loeb. He's also interesting that he's also suggesting one thing you know, why not to try to further collapse to see that it may form the seed of the black hole? Okay, because there is a, a gadget to simulation shows that there are uh, uh, formation of the black hole. Uh, he actually referred one paper also. So, uh, so these things we are trying to include here. Now, semi-analytical model, we have shown that that uh, luminosity is working. Now, we will put it here. Okay. See what is the... This is one thing. You can just work on that. Another thing is that in the semi-analytical model, we have taken this background density. Right. But actually, so we... So in the semiological model, we have taken this is the clump. Uh, this, this is the size of the clump. There is some stars are here. Okay, you you uh, solve the dynamical equation using Ronge Gupta method. Okay, but actually in the three D simulation there is a two D plane the disk right. So we are trying to also include a two D plane. Just as I have suggested for the exponential disk. Okay. Okay, so we can just also try that in the three D. Can just put a two D disk. So it, it will be more, you know, uh, realistic. And there is another project, okay, that how the disk fragmentation happens. And of course, there is a, because I also try, I also started that project, but did not finish, that we have some HDSS data available, okay, for poor middle east stars. You can easily, actually, I have it in my laptop, but we have never published it, because we need to uh, uh, learn some more from those who are doing data analysis. Okay, so you can actually compare. Okay, so I think that's the summary. Okay, so I think I am inter. My main interesting part is that possible of survival that should be consistent with the observation, uh, uh, because some of the sites even in the uh, Google uh, SDA sites you can there you can see the mass gravitation. Uh, this thing the gravity is, is there. So you can from there. You can calculate and you can match. So these are the summary, whatever I, I think I have been told. And they are the students because I also had this uh, in HRI research. Shobhan Bokshi, now he is in PhD. He did Sukal Pukundu. Uh, he is now in SN Pisa. Uh, Shubham Roko Bongshi, he just got the PhD where, uh, with uh, Volka Springle. And Kollan is doing with Taposda. And in Aizar Mohali, I have showed up Dhani. I don't know whether you know that. And they are my collaborator. Just did Charanno, Ralph, Manuel. And these are the courses I have taken. 
this is also in the HRI website. Okay, uh, two times numerical method and uh, thank you. Okay, yes, Junit. Uh, sir, uh, first of all, it was a really nice talk. Uh, I have a question. The first question is from the data about the company's history, the project part. So there, uh, the very first project, he said that uh, you'll be looking up to the of black holes which are formed by the by the attack. So what is the mass limit of this black hole? So it will be, so it depends on the mass of the primordial stars. Because, uh, because the formation of the black hole, it depends in the you can see that if the mass of the star say around uh, uh, around say 260 to say 500 solar mass okay it can for that we need to evolve it further see it can be a very you know smaller black hole okay formation yeah for or the seed you ca you can't say it's a black hole it can have a seed seed means it can still accurate because once the black hole is formed then then this simulation because then you have you can include the gr right then there will be swatchel radius the other point so we can't see the black hole seed of the black hole so that's why i have used that term so when the massive stars they collapse further if the density reaches very high okay so it can it can actually depending on the that's why mass is important and the, that's why we we try to include the radiative feedback because Mass of the star is such important because either it can survive if it is very low, it can also explode as a supernova if it is mass is around eight solar mass. It can also form a seed of the black hole if it is very high. I think you can have some papers which you can give you the the range of masses for that it can have, have a black hole. So, but black hole formation is very important. I mean, we can just have a look at that. Is it the most probable consequence of we, the black hole? We don't know. We don't know. It, as I said, it can also have a PISN supernova. They are instability supernova. So there are various possibility available. For yes. that, we need to run the simulation, 3D simulation for a long time. Okay. Any other question? Yes, Ankita and then Yes, yes, yes. Okay. If, because you have a mass, you can just put, you can just uh, plot the, but as I said, those mass, uh, why I have not put that IMF? Because we have not used, I mean, for the simulation, I have not used the radiative feedback for the simulation, right? So the mass distribution we have, that may, that may change, okay, right? But it can have a salpeter IMF. So salpeter IMF means, uh, uh, I mean, you can just put, yeah. Right. Yes, 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 yes. From the simulation, you can have a star formation rate. You can calculate that. Up to redshift 15, okay. I don't know. Is there any relation with the IMF? So, mother, is there any relation with the IMF and the star formation rate? Okay. I uh, from the star formation rate. Uh, I mean, no. The the point is that the um, yeah star formation rate is of course important. 
to but i don't know whether we can put the star formation because the imf solely depends on your how many stars has been formed and what is the mass range right now how you determine the mass from the luminosity right and the accretion so that's how that's how we can go right The, the possibility of the survival, why? Because it is very only, say, two star out of thousand star it can be survived. So that is very, you know, but it is extremely important because it has been seen that some of the people have found very poor metallicity stars. But that is, see, in our galaxy, there are 200 billion stars. And out of that, only one or two stars is poor metallicity. So you can calculate the probability. Okay, so um, that's for the nice part. So, if certain percentage of the stars they escape the cloud, right? Very so, few um, per fraction. Okay, so what is the finite per fraction? After escaping the cloud, so like, do they enter into the mini halo? Yes. And so, what see our galaxy actually within a mini yeah. halo, right? Yeah. So, yes, and so what does that mean? So, after like one in after entering the halo. So like they are moving in the halo's potential, am I right? So can first halo is formed. First, first, first halo is formed. That is the very beginning. Yeah. First halo is formed yeah. after yeah. the yeah. first after the dark matter simulation. Yeah. First halo is formed. Okay. Gas is coming. Yeah. The atomic hydrogen electron these are coming. Form a clumps. Then that clumps due to cooling, collapse, collapse and collapse form this density distribution and then star is formed within that clumps because star is a gas baryonic matter. Yeah, no, but I'm asking that those stars are, some are escaping, escaping from the clumps, but that still remain within the halo. Hello, okay. So, so I'm like whether they can escape the halo or I no it it, it, the, it does not escape the halo, it escape the clump, potential well of the clump. Halo is much bigger. Clump halo is around 300 per sec. They are doing the gravitational potential of the halo. And Still halo, huh? but there is no gas. So it cannot act the dark matter, right? Yeah. A star cannot act the yeah. dark matter particle. It can only act the baryonic matter particle. But if it, suppose the rocket is outside the earth, gravitational potential of the earth, it can't act it because there is nothing. Yeah. But it is still within the, because our galaxy, every galaxy is considered within a, within a halo. dark matter. Okay, uh, Ritaban, yeah. So, uh, these calculations that you are doing, the simulations, or um, so um, if you do it for uh, current universe, that shift equal to zero, hmm. what would be different? Only the cooling mechanism. Why? I mean, what, the, I mean why, what would be the difference in the cooling mechanism? Because there are a lot of metals in the gas. The cooling mechanism, have a, you have a iron, calcium, there are other metal which can cool the gas very efficiently. So the present star formation, all are low mass stars because cooling is very uh, efficient. Okay. So then you are saying that uh, in present star formation, there are metals, so there will be... Now also the stellar wind, radiation, the other things. A, uh, a star has, a gas has to escape. All the, so that's why I put the all the previous for example, these are all the star formation, very active star formation region, right? This is out, out of collapse, but there, there are a lot of metals there because it's not a poor metallicity, it's a metallicity. So, uh, so that is the difference that it has more cooling due to... Initial condition cooling. also will be uh, will be different slightly. So, that's what I was asking. So, what, what is the difference in the initial... Initial, yeah, that, that time, see... In the mini halo, the temper very realized temperature of the halo was thousand Kelvin for the mini halo. But for other halo, it is around 10 to the 8, right? For other halo, the very realized temperature will be, will, be, will be different. I think the entire process, because your initial condition will be different, the genes mass will be different. Okay. And uh, other question that I had was uh, about. Uh, it's, uh, okay, so go ahead. Any other question? 
Okay, if not, do you have a, one more question? Because we have to finish because the math people yes. Zoom is there to leave, so they are waiting. Okay, if not, then thank the speaker. Thank you very much for walking up to the mathematics department for this talk. Thank you. Thank you.